one of the things that I struggled with. I remember I would hear the Imams, whether in Egypt or Saudi Arabia, and I'd hear these stories of the people of the Salaf. You'd hear about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, or Umar, or Uthman, or Ali radiallahu anhum ajma'een. You'd hear about Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, you'd hear about Sahabiyyat, Umm Amara, and you'd hear about the sincerity and the feats that they would perform. You'd hear that Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, he would finish the whole Qur'an in one night in prayer. You'd hear Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimatullahi alayhim, that he would recite the Qur'an 60 times in Ramadan. You'd hear that Sufyan ibn Uyayna made 60 hajj, and every time in Arafah, he would make dua to Allah. He would say, oh Allah, bring me back next year. Until the final year, the 60th year, he didn't make that dua. And he died the month before hajj. And when they asked him, why didn't you make that dua? He said, I'm shy from Allah. 60 years is too much. Abdullah ibn Umar did 60. I didn't want to exceed him. Allahu Akbar. You hear these things. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I'm not even going to make it to Jannah. Look what these guys are doing. When they pray, they cry. When they read the Quran, it softens their heart. Abu Bakr came, gave all of his money to the Prophet ﷺ and to Allah. Abu Dahdah gave 400 trees for one tree in Jannah. The Allahu Anhum. And I would think to myself, man, I'm a hypocrite. I like to watch TV. I like to watch some sports. I like to play basketball. I like to go out with my friends. Where's Allah in my life? And that's what I want to talk to you today about. Because sometimes people can trick you into thinking that you're worse than you are. And sometimes you can trick yourself into thinking you're better than you are. Sometimes it could be even your parents, could be your teachers. They might make you think you're worse than you are. They put you down. You're not even worthy to be put in the rubbish. Sometimes the way we talk to each other makes us feel low. And sometimes you make yourself think you're better than you are. And in between that is the balance. In between that is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. In between that is finding Allah. And Allah tells you to search for Him. And that search begins with ilm, knowledge. See, it's one thing to say, oh, I know, brother, I know, I know enough. The moment you think you know, you don't know. The moment you think, I have enough, you have nothing. You've lost your way to Allah. Because the first of commands to our Prophet ﷺ was Iqra. The first commands of the Prophet ﷺ is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says him, Fa'lam, come to a certainty of knowledge. Annahu la ilaha illallah. That none is worthy of worship but me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask Allah, ask me for forgiveness and also for the believers. So how do you find Allah? Knowledge. On Sahabi, he was riding with his companions. They were out on a journey. He fell off the camel. His head was split open. He hit a rock when he fell down. And his companions, they got off the camels. They wrapped his turban tight. They saved his life. He came back to consciousness. And when he woke up, they said, Alhamdulillah, you're fine now, drinking and eating fine. Time of salah comes. All right, make wudu. He goes, what do you mean make wudu? Can't I make tayammum? They say, what are you talking about? What, you think you're going to invent your own deen? What do you mean make tayammum? He said, look, man, look my head. If I take the turban off, if I put water, I'm going to die. They said, Allah says in the Quran, فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدُوا مَا أَنْفَتَيَمَّمُ صَعِيدٌ طَيْبٌ If you don't have water, make tayammum. Then you can use the earth to make a ritual cleansing. But we have water. What, you're going to make your own madhab? You're going to think for yourself? This is what Allah said. This is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the sunnah. He said, you sure? They said, yeah. Took his turban off, made wudu, died. Got infected, died. They buried him in the desert. They came home a few days later. They see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet asked, where is he? فَقَالُوا مَاتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ وَحَكَى لَهُ حِكَايَةً They told them the story. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَتَلُوهُ They murdered him. They killed him. أَلَا سَأَلُوا How dare they not come and ask me? How dare they think that they know enough just because they read a verse of the Qur'an? إِنَّمَا شِفَاءُ الْعِيِّ السُؤَالِ The cure of ignorance is to ask a question. You have to ask. Someone who knows, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ They're the ones who point you to Allah. The Prophets of Allah did the same. I'm going to give you just three examples from the Prophets of Allah asking questions that you and I would not ever dare ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa asks Allah. You know, Musa speaks to Allah direct. 
Musa says, as is in Surah Al-A'raf, Rabbi, Arini, Anzur ilay. My Lord, let me see you. Allah says, Len tarani. You can never see me in this life. But look, Allah doesn't just say, you can't see me. Allah gives him evidence why. Look to that distant mountain. If it remains as you see it, I'll let you see me. When Allah's magnificence became known to the mountain in part, it was destroyed and Musa fell down dead. Allah brought him back to life to prove a point. He asks the question, I want to know. Ibrahim asks Allah as is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Because I'm telling you, if you have a question, you can't just keep it. You got to ask. Ibrahim says to Allah, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhyi al-mawta. Oh Allah, show me how you bring the dead to life. Allah says, awalam tu'min. Is it because you doubt? You don't believe? You don't believe I can do it, Ibrahim? No, Allah, I believe in you, O oh Allah. But my heart, I just want it to be at ease, meaning there's something here in my chest. Allah says, you believe? I'll still show you. Take four birds, different shapes and colors and sizes and feathers. Cut them into small pieces. Mix them up. Put some on every distant mountain. And then call them to you. They will come putting themselves back together and fly back to you. Allahu Akbar. Isa alayhi salam. The Hawariyeen, the believers, the Sahaba of Jesus alayhi salam. They believe in him. They saw him with their own eyes by the power of Allah. Bring the dead to life. Breathe into a clay model of a bird with the power of Allah came into life. They saw him with the power of Allah cure the blind and the deaf and the mute. All of this. And they still ask. They say, Ya Isa ibn Maryam, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yunazzil alayna ma'idatan min as sama Ask Allah to bring down a table spread from the heaven, something we can eat from. Takunu lana eida, we'll take it as a day of celebration. And so it's a day that we will be proud of knowing Allah brought heavenly food down to us. Qala taqullah. He said, fear Allah, what's wrong with you people? Everything you saw, you want more? They have a question. Allah says, I will answer. Qala inni munazziluha alaykum. I will bring it down to you. But the one who eats from it and then disbelieves, Allah gives them the answer to the question. So that brings us back to you. Who do you ask and what do you ask about? Three questions that I want you to begin with. The first question is, do I love Allah? Have I chosen Allah? You're not a Muslim just because you were born Muslim. You're a Muslim because you made a choice. Aslam tawajhaka lillah. You have to give yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, have I walked and taken the first step on his sirat al-mustaqeem? Have I planned to take the steps that will lead me to Jannah? Or am I just living life by accident? Whatever happens, happens. If my parents take me to the masjid, I go to the masjid. If they don't, I'm not going to go. If my father tells me, did you pray? I pray. If he doesn't, I don't. What do you want? You want to be spoon fed like a baby? Or are you going to get up and cook it? That's what you got to do. So are you walking the straight path? Or is people carrying you every step of the way? And third and finally, and I leave you with this question, is what am I willing to give up for Allah? What are you going to give up to be successful in finding Allah? And if you find Allah, it is as the Prophet ﷺ says to Abdullah ibn Abbas, a young man like you, a young Muslim like you, my brothers and sisters. Guard Allah, He will guard you. Guard Allah, you will find Him in front of you, always with you, always leading you in success in life. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you and I success in life.